Hi, welcome to the New Zealand Wines Vodcast. I'm Neil Phillips and I'm joined today by New Zealand wine expert Chris Scott. Also, I'm delighted to say we have Montana winemaker Nigel Fraser. Now, Marlborough is one of the key wine producing regions in New Zealand for both whites and reds. So come on, Nigel, help me out here and just tell me what those key features are you're going to find from whites and reds in Marlborough. Marlborough, uh, obviously a range of varieties, but Sauvignon Blanc is, is the, the hallmark variety there. Mm -hmm. um, really fresh upfront fruit, fruit flavours. That's what Marlborough and, mm -hmm. and even New Zealand to, to a large extent is about. It's about that brightness and freshness of fruit. Mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, Sauvignon Blanc, is, is all about getting that flavour of the berry, in essence, into the glass. What I like about this wine is, on the nose you're getting like lemons, grapefruits, all that sort of stuff, but the mouthfeel is really nice. It's got a really, um, not, I wouldn't quite go as far as oily, but it's got a real substantial mouthfeel. Some, some Sauvignon Blancs, because of that zesty acidity you get in mm -hmm. New Zealand, can t sometimes taste a wee bit thin, but this mm. has got a real breadth and feel in the mouth. Yeah. Perfect for food. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of food would you go for here? Um, well, normally I would say, you know, Sauvignon Blanc, you want to go for a sort of shellfish or something like this, but I think there's a bit more weight there. You could yep. probably have something with a bit more substantial than just fish. You could go for maybe a, a, a darker meat fish, or mm -hmm. you could even go to some pasta, maybe some nice cheese-based carbonara or something like that. Now, we're going to turn on to red, and, and one of the other key grape varieties in Marlborough is Pinot Noir, and we've got this Montana Terraces to taste as well. Tell me about that. Pinot's probably a, quite new to a lot of uh, UK people, in that, you know, Pinot from New Zealand anyway, because it's, it's been going in New Zealand for about 10 or so years, but mm -hmm. it's only really the volumes are there that they can really get access to them now. And this is great, you know, it's upfront fruit, heaps of um, cherries. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say it's more of a cherry than a, a black fruit, black cherry, it's more red cherry. Um, lovely wine though, um, crisp acidity, got a good weight through the white mouth as well. You know, some wines can get a bit thin and this has kept the weight all the way through. Quite yes. warming on the throat as well. Yeah, I think some of that weight is a reflection in, in the same way as the Sauvignon Blanc. It's from a similar soil type um, in a similar area of the valley in Marlborough and that kind of weight and breadth of palate mm. is consistent across the different varieties that we plant there. So um, you're sort of seeing a parallel, if you like, between the two wines. But I suppose this is a Marlborough Pinot, but New Zealand's yeah. doing Pinot in Otago, uh, they're doing it in Waipara, mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly the South Island I think it's located, but yeah. there's some fantastic Pinots coming out of New Zealand, and brilliant Pinots. One of the other things is that people are talking about is sustainable winemaking, and mm. actually how it may affect certain wine regions in the future. Yep. What, are, what are wineries actually doing to support their natural environment at the moment? I think probably the first thing is to understand what sustainability is, because it's such a, such a difficult thing to get your head around. I th the definition I think that works really well is using resources today with, so you don't compromise resources for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then by doing that, it just changes the way you look mm -hmm. at the way you do your viticulture. Mm -hmm. Probably the nice one I, I like anyway is planting flowers up between the rows mm -hmm. in your vine. And what that does is it encourages a lot of ladybirds as well as other life into yeah. it. And then the ladybirds eat the mealybugs or some of the predator insects in the vineyard, which mm -hmm. is brilliant. And at the end of the season, you just compost the flowers back into it and you improve the organic nature of your soil. Fantastic. That sounds great. What yeah. do you think, Nigel? Yeah, well, look, there's a raft of initiatives going on. There's the uh, Falcon Project in Marlborough where they're using uh, native falcons, they're providing nesting sites for them, and they're there to, to drive off the, the birds that eat the seeds and, and um, affect the fruit that affects wine quality. Mm -hmm. um, there's programs to reduce the amount of sprays. There's programs to uh, use natural composts there's, there's many, many initiatives going on. Montana as a company is, a, is uh, already starting on the road to uh, organic winemaking with certain blocks of fruit. So in the years to come, we'll be able to see organic wines coming out of Montana as well. That sounds great. Guys, thanks very much for coming in today. Thank Folks, you. get on and get those bookings and get out to Marlborough.